Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Heroes. Looks, I'm Calder Ness, your co-host of the hour. This is episode 502. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, yeah. six Over people work. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, it doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Yeah. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, you know, fresh out the airport, ready to rip. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, we just got back. Not really just got back, but it kind of still feels like it. From Champion Clicks, guys, so hopefully this will end up being a bit of a shorter episode. Um, we're just going to kind of highlight some things throughout the events. We spent, geez, from 5 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. on Monday traveling in airports, waiting around in airports, on planes, off of planes, all that stuff for a long time, for a, <laughs> for a while. Taking taking a little bit to get to to get back into the swing of things. So, I mean, what made us happy this week? We had an awesome time at Champion Clicks Open. The event was amazing. Uh, David ran a great event. Special thanks to Aaron Virgilio and the Giant Reach guys overall uh, for helping us get down there and covering us. And you know, big shout out to them because without Aaron, we wouldn't have had the coverage that we brought you guys. So that was just massive. That was huge. So seriously, shout out them, uh, House Rules Gaming. They were in charge of uh, whatever the normal gaming things that were on the uh, on the premises. They were the products and whatnot. So that was really cool. Shout out to Jonathan Virgilio uh, and Action Objects for his cool like three D printed action tokens and all the dice and the cool like symbiotes and vines and like tentacle markers that he had. I know I bought a pair of a uh, set of the Absorber Man markers and stuff from him. So, like those are really cool. And then shout out Adam Shiver, dude. The amazing Clicks cherry carrying trays and the Clicks boxes were just absolutely phenomenal. But um, let's just kind of go through day by day quick for, I mean, we threw out so much content this <laughs> last weekend, guys. You, I'm sure you all pretty much know uh, what happened and what it was like. But just really quickly, winners of Apples and Oranges. That was Clay Wood and George Masu. They had some pretty cool teams. Pulp, sadly, I guess I was curious about what Pulp was going to be like getting into a post-Worlds two new sets. And sadly, Pulp is also just kind of boiled down uh, to a pretty semi-set-in-stone meta. We saw a few, like a handful of unique teams, but it wasn't wasn't a whole lot. All the unique teams on Apples and Oranges were definitely on the Apples side with the uh the the theme player the 400 point theme player yeah for sure uh like so the winner ended up like clay was the winner of the oranges side the pulp side and he was playing blackheart falcon lex luther which lex is interesting orb red widow necron doctor strange um that's the avengers forever doctor strange avengers forever miss marvel manifold and black manta goon I think Manifold, Orb, Lex Luthor, to an extent, Red Widow for sure, Necron for sure, Falcon and Blackheart are all things that we expect in Pulp. Um, but yeah, it's Blackheart, Falcon, essentially take out the need for TK, and then the rest of the team just kind of does a lot of work. Yeah. That was that was yeah. the winning Pulp build. So, and we just, but we saw so many of those like similar elements. Like, like you said, like Lex Luthor's a little different, but so many of those similar elements were on other teams. I will say the second place team of the Redmonds, uh, Ryan and Christine, her pulp team was actually quite different with the soldier theme team with like militant and Red Skull and everything. So, still had some like similar stuff that we're kind of used to seeing on pulp, but for the most part, it was definitely more unique. Just not having like Orb, Blackheart, Sinister. Just <laughs> just there alone made it unique so 
Georgia's team, I'll do a quick run through and shout out a Georgia's team really quick. He had a Rack Knight with the Soul Sword, the 048 Ghost Rider of Bucky's Arm, Blackheart, Iron Inquisitor, Mephisto with the Sinestro Ring. Right? Yeah. Madam Web, Web Shooters, the Green Lantern with the Green Lantern Ring, Daredevil. How many points is Daredevil? 20 points with the Billy Clubs, Ghost Goblin, uh, Blade, Doom Supreme, and Cathan on the sidelines. So it had to be, it was themed, so everything had to show that printed keyword. So, yeah, George rocking that mystical theme. Congratulations to these guys, though. They played a heck of a day. It was great interviewing them. You can find all of that on Dial H. Clicks on either Facebook, or you can see a ton of their pulp games since we were mostly doing the top table. You can check out our day one live stream for all of that. But day one was a great day. We ended it with... Did we end it with opening Disney Plus? Started it with Disney Plus. It was like we kind of start it. Yeah, it was like uh, midday, maybe it was around Swiss or something. But yeah, we we started the Disney Plus unboxing, and I'll just uh, I'll just reiterate what Wiz Kids Hero Click said. Uh, The Dial H team has been busy returning from the Champion Clicks Open weekend. They're unboxing boosters from Marvel Studio Hero Clicks next phase. Also, while we expect to have a great time with the Dial H team's unboxing videos this week, longtime Heroclix fans, don't worry. Scott Porter will rejoin us for unboxing videos with the next booster release, Marvel Heroclix Deadpool X Weapon X. We're fortunate to have so many great fans and are appreciative of all the work Scott has done. Take a peek at some of the figures Marvel Studios Heroclix next phase. Make sure Dial H for Heroclix Make sure to follow Dial H for Hero Clicks podcast. Uh, what's your favorite figure, and what have you seen so far? That was their post for our uh, our actual unboxing, but we did a live oh, unboxing. Nice. We did four boosters live day one, um, somewhere in between all the like other live coverage videos. But yeah, there was a lot of coverage, a lot of or a lot of coverage, and a lot of people asking about like where Scott, where Scott, Scott doing unboxing too, where Scott. Is right. Scott doing? Is Scott doing? Uh, so I think reading comprehension on this says uh, he will rejoin us for the next one. Is essentially if you can read right. three paragraphs, that's <laughs> what it reads to. I know a lot of people are wondering, questioning, where is Scott? I don't know where he is. I believe he will rejoin us because they said he will, but that's the most I know. I don't know where he physically is. I'm sorry. We can't answer that. So many people have asked. Best we know is what WizKid says is that's going to be that he will rejoin us for the Deadpool Weapon X set. Yeah, exactly. So it's cool. Um, Obviously, I'm happy that the HeroClix community gets to see number one. Us do all these super fun unboxings. It was such a really cool opportunity. I'm happy we got to do it. Um, especially since Scott wasn't able to do it this time around for whatever. and But he'll be back. So everybody that's commenting where he is, he'll be rejoining us for Deadpool Weapon X. But yeah, it's just super cool that we were able to like do the unboxings this time around. So we put a ton of work into him. Ian put a ton of work editing all this stuff together for him. Uh, we were making skits out the wazoo. Uh, I just really hope people enjoy him. And so far, it looks like people really have been enjoying him. So... Again, long-time Dial H fans, I'm glad that you guys are happy that we are finally getting some unboxing love. We got to be the first people to show all this stuff off because it's been seriously like a ton of fun to be able to show it off. So glad, glad WizKids made an official post talking about it so it answers, hopefully, any questions people kind of have about why it's different and whatnot. So I know I've already seen some posts online being like, oh, I didn't realize they were up. I think people just kind of get wired into doing it for... 10 years or however long it's been uh so it's like oh it's over here now cool so hopefully yeah people are enjoying them because we've done i mean it was a ton of work like you were there you know (laughs) you know we did a ton for these unboxings so hopefully hopefully you guys enjoy them we gosh we literally did so many skits (laughs) it's so funny most costume changes for any i guess project not singular video but project for sure yeah I I hope people enjoy them. Um, I know it's not following the normal Scott format, but we did four unbox or four boosters unboxed and live, and then we did two on Monday, and then we're gonna be doing we did one one, and uh, I guess you'll have to see what the rest of the week entails. But Ooh. also keep keep an eye out for the shorts because that's a different thing that hasn't happened before that we are doing as well. That's right. Um, 
but yeah, then on, uh, let's see, what would it have been? Day two. I know we did Sherlock on day two. Did we? We did Kong and Sherlock. We did Kong did we do, yeah, earlier. So we did Kong we did first. Yeah. So yeah, the, the first look at Kong was on our YouTube. Um, that was not a live video. We edited a quick short in in Orlando video of the Kong Iconics. And then a little while later, we did the same thing for Sherlock. So both of those are up on our YouTube. Um, if you scroll wave down on our, our Facebook, you can see the progression of the week. But yeah, yes, uh, during coverage of the Champion Clicks event, we managed to sneak in uh, two really solid Iconics. Both yeah. of those would have been Saturday. And then, they, yeah, yeah, so we unboxed four boosters of of Disney Next Phase on Friday, the two Iconics on Saturday, and then Sunday we kind of got like a little bit of a break. We did uh, the Team Sealed, which Team Sealed is always fun, and we get got to follow a team we picked a very good team to follow i think wow yeah man i was so happy no offense to past dial h sponsored teams a little because... offense to them a yeah <laughs> this one got second place it was so awesome to follow and stick with a team that uh it, it's tough that performed really well i'll just say it. that performed really really well and like kept doing like really good so shout out to zale uh the alpha strike youtube channel check it out uh diego and then aaron morgan like these guys were awesome the earthbound and down team the uh they went by they who remain uh it was such a great team to follow throughout the day man i super enjoyed it they had really sick polls uh, I really enjoyed following them, interviewing them between rounds, being able to stream quite a few of their games. We were able to get uh, the A, B, and C player all on camera on separate matchups. Yeah, because they were they were close Great. to the top table. Like towards yeah. the end, they were all like top table for for a long enough time that we managed to get one of each, uh, which is not normal for a, a team sealed, I would say. No. Um, but yeah, it was. It was really awesome that we were able to uh, cover them as fully as we did. And, yeah, like up until the part where they got second Only beat out by three points gaming, which, of course, previous world champ uh, Scott Crampton and ah. some other guy. I, I don't know if he... I think at one point, weren't really they all previous world champs? Didn't Ed win, like, a Wizard World World Championship yeah, or something technically, like that? Yeah. Technically, technically yeah. Technically, yeah. Isaac's father also was, won a was world Scott champion. a world champion? I can never <laughs> yeah. remember if Scott was a world champ or if he was a national champion back when they still did make a figure for Scott, nationals. Scott is also like a, a Wizards champ. Or oh, something. okay. He's a Wizards champ. But like, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly like how that. All they didn't make out. figures, so it's still hard to remember. Yeah. That's not it's, even a slight. That's just like, I kind of forget. Unless they have a figure tied to their name, I kind of forget who all is a champion in Hero Collect, yeah. I'm being honest. Another That's big awesome. thing is um, on Saturday after so after we did the unboxing, uh, we had the the auction night and oh yeah, jeez yeah, That's the, huge. the IPF Over. we auctioned off each booster as part of a battle royale with one of the Kongs that we previewed as a prize for that, and then we threw in a Venom God of Symbiotes, and so. Your chances of uh, the things that you could win were like the from from top down ish were uh, convention ex- or not convention exclusive. Jeez, Iconics Kong, convention exclusive Venom God of Symbiotes, Super Rare Kate Barton or not Kate Barton. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I don't know Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop, yeah, yeah, Super Rare Kate Bishop, and then the Rare Kingpin from. Uh, next phase so those two figures from next phase were like the highest rarity that we had there was two rares that were also in there and then of course snake drafting the rest of the booster that you'd have several months early um all of those went for over 200 dollars. so each that was so awesome each br spot which of which there was four went for over 200 dollars and then we also auctioned off just another Kong that also went for over two hundred dollars. So we got a little over a uh, thousand bucks altogether for that, which was really awesome to get uh, the IPF 
like a little huge boost up and going right off the bat. Yeah. But um yeah, and then uh I guess let's see, three hundred point modern day, that would have been was that Saturday or was that Saturday. Sunday? That was That's Saturday. still Saturday. That was Saturday. Really quick, so on the battle royale though kate bishop is literally so insane oh like yeah. not only is she like already get i don't want to get into talking to too much about these figures but not only is she insanely good in like sealed but i think just like good in general but man in sealed she was crushing people like oh when you're on that small map and when you stand still you get plus two the, range the figures i can't Holy remember smokes. his name but the the figures the person that got kate oh drafted Chris, yeah was like yeah, Chris drafted Dude. Kate. He drafted Clint, and then there was like another he got Val, archer. Dude, so he had uh, he had he had Kate, a second Kate, and then a Clint, and then he got Valentina. And yeah. so he had like a shield TA. He had technically two enhancements uh, because of Kate Bishop. I guess really one for whatever, but technically access to like two, like insane how much damage like he was able to get. His super Kate Bishop shooting for five to six damage with a plus three to range with a nine range in sealed with a prob. Holy smokes. Like literally so good. Yeah. Like, I don't dang. remember the standings. I remember he won first. Yeah, he definitely won. Well, uh, I'll tell you the standings. He I won. I remember Newmark uh, got last. <laughs> yeah. So I think he won. Ethan Jacobs, I want to say, got second. Yes. And then Aaron Virgilio... Big, again, once again, big shout out, Aaron. Uh, not only balled out for us to come down there, uh, getting us to cover, but also balled out for the IPF. Uh, he got third, and then David Newmark. Shout out, David Newmark. Scored no points. It was like, no, David, no. That happened when he didn't. When he didn't just put his demon right up in the way, so it could just potentially deal free damage and then flurry. He just kind of forgot about it, and I was like, oh, that's not great. He had very close combat pieces, though, and he was right next to the ranged guy. It was tough. Yeah, that happens. It, it happens. Finishing out that day, uh, uh, Alex Mater won the yeah. Modern 300-point championship. We have the, all of that on stream uh, as yeah. well. Very, really cool. very solid teams. We followed we followed Joe Safa yeah. for the majority of the day, um, and what an incredibly interesting team Josafa was running. I don't know. I, st I still haven't figured out exactly how it, it it worked, but it was a detective theme that just utilized all of the mystery cards in, in an insane manner. It was crazy to watch, crazy to follow up with him each turn, and he only ended up losing in the, like the top eight or the top four, but yeah, like when he fi his reign finally came to an end, he was undefeated for the weekend up until that point, uh, from all through Friday, all through yeah. Saturday, up until the point where he was kicked out of like the top cut. And what an insane run it was! And I think it's definitely a team that people are sleeping on. It was like double Shaggy, uh, Hawkeye, double Scott Hawkeye. Porter, Hawkeye, it's Hawkeye. Good. Yeah, it was uh, utility belt on world's finest. And then Commissioner Gordon uh, Legacy card. And so, oh, and the Scott Crampton bystander. But yeah, um, an insane, like, little uh, detective theme. Or not detective theme. Uh, is it detective I mean, it's theme? Yeah, it's detective. Yeah, yeah detective theme. They be solving mysteries, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Insane detective theme. And, like, if you want more info on it, we have plenty of coverage of him that day talking over his build and how it works. I think we interviewed him like five or six Had times throughout that day. Line. Yeah. And when it really popped off, it really popped off. And I don't know. I think the last game, it just, he just missed too many times or something is what happened. But either way, an amazing yeah. build. Definitely like, a shout so, out to that one. So awesome. I got to shout out a build. We're going to shout out. Bill. I got to shout out Dylan Kassabaum. The, uh, the only person that walked away with the based keyword here, he had the, he is running a soldier theme. I was like so impressed, dude. He had the, our soldier or warrior, I can't remember, but yeah, it's warrior. So the prime Wonder Woman with the Green Lantern ring utility belt. He had death metal Wonder Woman, King Killmonger, but double Captain America on the Pegasus and then double Scott Porter. And it was just like, all right, 
solid team. And then, oh, once again, big shout out. Didn't run any tarot cards and still managed yeah. to get top eight. That was super impressive. I was like, dang, man, nice. So, No tarot cards. Sometimes. Sometimes yeah. beneficial. Sometimes beneficial. You know, sometimes it just works out for you. And I love his player card. He gave him the smoky foot cap treatment with some smoke around him. A little bit of holding the shield. Like, looked really cool. Oh, once again, shout out, Luke. For making these tar uh, these uh <laughs> tarot cards, these player cards, they looked so great. Absolutely, Loving yeah. the Miami Vice vibe to them. They were hilarious. They were cool, and I hope everybody else got to enjoy them as well. Uh, Golden Daniel Powell being just hilarious, <laughs> hilarious, so funny, so awesome. So, yeah, shout out Alex though, South Dakota local, who uh, who was able to win it all down there, win the big event, the. Going on, I think we're good, right? I think that's everything Saturday. My brain is so scattered. That was everything Saturday. Um, yeah, Saturday because 300 modern went to the charity event where they. Yep. I I didn't get totals for how much they raised for the other charities that were going on, which right. I feel bad about. But we were just doing so much stuff that like it was it was hard to keep everything in uh, one spot. So I'm pretty sure Champion Clicks Open has that stuff. Um, but then, yeah, Sunday went on to uh, 3v3 sealed, which popped off without a hitch, as far as I can tell. I don't think there was really, like, any any big hiccups. I know there was the one team that pulled a booster without any cards, the one team that actually, oh, like, had, like, yeah. a, a reason to, like, mulligan or something was the team that we had on stream, and they actually kept that booster uh, somebody luckily, uh, what is it? House gaming, house, house rules, gaming, house rules yeah. gaming. They had cards for the figures that they were missing cards for, and yeah, that was the team that we put on stream. That was Earthbound and Down. We've already shouted them out a little bit, but awesome job for those guys. They pulled pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. Like looking back, it was a very solid pull of like a brick. And they managed to go all the way, bouncing back and forth between a little bit of loss, a little bit of not loss, and ended up at the the top table against three points gaming, the the Matt Esbrook less gaming yeah. of the four points, and yeah, that was their their only loss of the day, their only big loss of the day, I should say. So, yeah. That was that was Sunday, and then uh, after Sunday, well, and with all those wins, the grand champion. It was actually it was between Alex Mater. So they did this whole the person that won the most games throughout the event was declared the grand champion, and that was like a thousand dollars, a lot more prizing, this big Mjolnir trophy, and it was actually between Alex Mater and Isaac Arnold Berkovitz. And because Isaac's team was able to win, and Isaac also won his game here too, uh, was able to win the finals for teams that pushed him one win over Alex Mater to declare uh, Isaac AB the champion, the overall like grand champion. So shout out that as well. Very yeah. impressive that he was able to uh, to snag that. So not only walking away with like a team win, but also a grand champion win for Isaac himself for having like you know a good showing in the apples oranges, a good showing in modern. And right. then, like, and then they, they also eight, counted, right? for whatever reason, they counted the uh, qualifiers as well, which I don't know they if, did count qualifiers. I don't know if that uh, I Isaac was participated odd. in that, but yeah, he definitely... I don't know. He definitely did good all three days. Yeah, but then, yeah, Sunday ended with just Team Sealed being over and hanging out in the hot tub for a little bit. We were able to show off four next phase boosters on the weekend, the Kong, the... Sherlock Holmes iconics were just insane. And once again, guys, if you missed all of this and you're only hearing about it now, check out our YouTube. It's all up there. Check out our live streams if you want to see gameplay. If you want to kind of skip around them, you can because you can kind of see when a game ends where we start like either interviewing a player or one of us. One of the three of us will just be kind of talking about how the day is going so far. Definitely check that out. The chess clock event also happened. We have a video up on the channel today. Just going over right. the chess clock rules, you'll see some chess clock gameplay, um, and then some final thoughts of the chess clock event as well will be also up on the channel. Yeah, and then we'll also be, by the time you're hearing this, um, almost done with Next Phase unboxing, but 
almost not done with next phase boxing because yeah. uh yeah we've been we've been doing not just booster breaks like a, a normal unboxing that you'd expect but we've also been highlighting certain characters with shorts so make sure to check out our shorts not just our videos on our channel if you want to get if you really if you're really itching for next phase and you really want yeah. to see them that's where to go but uh, gotta look yeah. out for those shorts because there's uh, you know all sorts of stuff that's getting spoiled you don't want to miss any yeah. there's gonna be uh, some cool. interesting interesting things in there that's for sure <laughs> but yeah it was a long weekend it was a good weekend I think the thing that made me happy this weekend was mm, I'm gonna say team sealed day was my well ah, man it's so hard there are so many good parts of this weekend champion clicks is this was my first champion clicks and it was an awesome event it was ran really well I can't believe the times popped off when they said they would like it yeah. was it was insanely how ha- like how well it was run obviously some absolute veteran judges and veteran players that were like running it so like pj lucas anthony judging the event was a huge head start on the competition as far as like getting things to kick off um so like huge shout out to them for keeping things like timed well but it's it's hard for me to describe which day was my favorite because obviously like popping open boosters day one was awesome but popping open sherlock and kong and then also the ipf popping off like late saturday night made saturday really awesome and then sunday just being probably like the best uh hero click story that i think we've like filmed slash live streamed is probably like one of my favorites so it was a great time and uh yeah I, I don't know if I can pick a favorite day. I'm going to say Saturday just because of the uh, the Iconics. Seeing the oh, new Iconics sure. was awesome. They Both of them, the Kong and Sherlock, both do very different things, but equally interesting and awesome. Yeah. The And again, that's a huge shout-out to WizKids for sending down the Iconics and never-before-released stuff and all sorts of other cool stuff that we were also able to give away throughout the weekend. That was like such awesome support be able to have but man i was just so impressed that we were able to kind of like at worlds how we were able to show off never before seen like play at home kit for notorious i was so impressed on the turnaround time for getting out two iconics videos in one day and they looked so good so just like hats off simian <laughs> like holy smokes man it was just awesome that we were able to get all of that out there like so fast while also doing a ton of coverage currently happening while also was, do, yeah like uh, like doing, doing live else. streams and stuff. plus that and then it's like oh my phone's dying <laughs> you know and then it's yeah. like oh we gotta charge it like oh man just going through all like it was hectic but man it was so awesome and i think i agree like one of my favorite parts was just how well the live stream went throughout the day being able to keep a constant live for the most part being able to check in and kind of seeing how I don't know. I like to feel like people in the live stream were able to to make some friends by by the end of it. We had some we had a quite a few consistent uh viewers and commenters in the live stream. That was really really fun and honestly it made me happy when they finally would like pop in when we would like start a stream and it's like, "Oh, I was waiting for so and so and they finally popped in." It's like, "Oh, yeah, they're here and they're commenting and they're having a good time." It was really fun. So the live stream was just really awesome. Ah. Uh, but yeah, Jamie clicks what great fun what a great event let's go ahead i think wind down the episode here and just uh go through some listener questions really quick they've been piling up they've been piling up on the discord kind of the way it's the way it's been going there are dozens of us dozens bill asks really quickly since we're getting king arthur what should excalibur do if it wasn't equipment um he has 10 points free with ruler Blaze Claws Fangs, during Force Construction, the character equipped with Excalibur gains the ruler keyword leadership if the equipped character already had both the leadership, leadership, wait, the ruler keyword and leadership, and then leadership gives plus two actions total instead. That's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. I I think it's better than giving just straight up leadership, but I really don't know so much what Excalibur itself would do. It kind of has, in a lot of media, like it protects 
King Arthur. Like it kind of protects the person that that's worthy that's of Excalibur. My thing, we, we, so we kind of discussed this because there was a Facebook post that was yeah uh, what equipment should give leadership or could give leadership. And I was like, well, Excalibur makes sense because that made King Arthur like the ruler. The leader, yeah. Yeah, the ruler slash leader. But at the end of the day, like that doesn't necessarily – being a like ruler or a leader of a nation doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good leader. It just means that like you're in that position. So kind of fell on the end of um, – that would give you like mastermind, probably, but not Ooh, necessarily okay. leadership. So, so yeah, I, I think Excalibur would be more in the like line of handing out leadership. Like you could use, uh, or not leadership, geez, uh, hand out mastermind, but only to target characters of like a certain point value, like probably like sub 30, 30 points under. I don't know. So that you could, uh, you could rule with not necessarily like an iron fist, but like more so the droves of minions would dive in front of you to like save you kind of thing. Right. It's not so much like this doesn't make you a good leader, but now it's like, Oh, all hail the King, you know, die for the King or like whatever type of a deal almost is like the vibe with it. Now I can see that. Yeah. But also I just think like no item like I like that Bill's version doesn't grant leadership because I again no item should ever grant leadership, but like King Arthur was worthy because he was already like a good leader. Just the people had the weird mythos of you have to have Excalibur. Excalibur is what's going to choose. Like King Arthur already probably had all of those qualities, but because it's because of those qualities that he was able to like pull the sword from the stone, right? So right, yeah, similar to like a Green Lantern ring where. You could find one. Yeah. You, ne- you couldn't necessarily just wield it just you because. Use it. Yeah, you gotta have the willpower. Yeah. The ability to overcome great fear or whatever they say. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think some kind of like defense boost or some like buff when you're in your starting area or like on your side of the map would just be really cool. But I don't know. I don't know what all Excalibur could do. Realistically, Excalibur really shouldn't, you know, be an equipment. It should just be like a trait with like with his dial yeah. yeah like it should just be represented in king arthur's dial more so than actually being equipment but i get it it is like an iconic thing an iconic piece of equipment but i don't know i guess i don't have a great answer but we'll see bill says what made the game more annoying id cards or tarot cards i mean it's id cards right Absolutely. like hand, hands down like there's no there's really no contest id cards made the game like tarot cards miserable. don't don't like bring a character Tarot cards can be insanely annoying, but they don't bring a character onto the map that can attack you and then get off of the map before yeah. you even have like a chance to do anything. I guess it's like tarot cards would make your team better or make you more competitive, but you can still play, as we've seen again, Dylan Kassabom, you can still play competitively and do very well without tarot cards versus like entire teams for years were centered around ID cards. Yeah. The builds like, themselves were centered yeah. around ID cards. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it was to the point where if you didn't have ID cards, you were absolutely playing to a, like, worse, like, meta. Like, yeah. I remember playing King Shark. Like, I, I, I built a team that was, like, a 300-point King Shark kind of, like, build, but I didn't use any ID cards. And I tested it a few times, and everyone I tested against said, this would be a great team, but, like, the the main reason you play King Shark is because ID cards. And I was like, right. I just hate that. Like, it's yeah. super cool that I can move up and then flurry potentially. But they were like, no, no, you want to use that move up speed so that you can power action, not flurry, call in something. And I was like, I absolutely hate this. I know. It's way yeah. cooler to flurry up and King Shark. But yeah, it's like, nope, ID cards are just, they're just better. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Luckily, they're not legal in any format other than Golden right now. So. Goodness. Yeah, thank thank goodness. Luke 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 asks, do you think lantern rings could still be as powerful or too watered down or perhaps even properly balanced if the constructs took up sideline spots? As someone that likes to play two plus three, four lanterns on a team, hate hate this idea. Uh, There being six sideline spots, I think constructs, people would still play them, but I think it would literally be like they have one contract dropper, Scott Porter, um, and then it's like boot, chainsaw, 
stop sign. Yeah. And then, like, that's good. Well, you know? you'd probably do boot chainsaw, stop sign, yellow oh, lantern, fire Scott, and then... Maybe. I was just but, thinking, yeah. repeat those same three, but with somebody else. Sure. Like, Casey, Green Lantern, it, or something. Like, and that's, like, no Scrappy, that's no War Machine, that's no... Absorbing Man Prime, like so much. Like I don't get me wrong, I love yeah. like I love the idea of like sideline being more impactful and more important. Uh, maybe if like two lantern constructs took up a sideline spot, I would feel that that is a little bit more balanced. Yeah, I do like the idea. I don't mind the idea of them taking up a sideline spot. I think if it was still three for every hundred points, I'd be like, okay, you know what? Sure, with like the current limited amount of sideline things in current game. But then I feel like this would just mean like, okay, then all anybody cares about is the yellow ring, the rest of the rings, like tank and value, you know, like besides like yellow and maybe indigo or blue, the rest of the rings like just tank and value. And nobody wants to play them except for like just pretty much just yellow because you would literally just use it with Scott. That would be my only problem with like that scenario right now. I don't hate the idea. I think, I think there's better ways that like we could fix the like problem of constructs though. So I, I think is. I yeah. think one of the big things is yeah just people that can keyword cheat which is basically just Scott but um, anything that can keyword cheat and then drop stuff for free if it was always a power action and there just was no free aspect except for people with like you know like Indigo 1, Sinestro Hal Jordan like if it was just those people um, it'd be fine I think for them dropping it as free. None of those people are like the abusable ones. It's like Casey Green Lantern, uh, Prime Batman. It's all the like insanely stupid cheap ones that can also drop stuff for free. Uh, that's where it like becomes problematic in my opinion. But honestly, I, I think of all things considered, Lantern Rings aren't the worst thing that we could have. No. No. I don't. I don't think so. Not at all. Even when it comes to like the Scott Porters, like the two Scots being able to use them technically, um, one being able to use them as free, and then the other being able to use them or be equipped with them or whatever. Um, I don't think that's the most broken thing or inexpensive thing we've ever had in the game. The Scots themselves, that's a different story. But yeah, uh, yeah. No, I I think the the lantern rings are very efficient, but still like adequately costed for the most part i agree next up bill asked during episode 500 WizKids said there could be starters that are non-dc or marvel what should they be mm. this is being like along the independent like the iconics line of things that are out in the open which actually just to address a comment really quick someone did say like man i wish they would have just called him king kong so they can't call him King Kong because King yes. Kong is owned by like is it Universal. I want to yeah, say, like, I, I believe so, it's Universal, and that's why it's Skull Mountain Island and not Skull Island on the card because it's right. based on like the book. So that's the reason we were able to even get a Kong in the first place is because it's actually specifically not "quote unquote" King Kong, right? Um, which is fine. Cause... Just like how how we could have Steamboat Willie in the game now because oh boy, <laughs> that is that is like lapsed. True. That uh, get intellectual really property is lab. Make what him make the boat. I don't, <laughs> yeah, remember, can, I don't know who's can in make the, the whistle. You can make, make him, him whistle. Yeah, the whistle that he does is separate from himself. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, there's Little. there's a bunch of like hoops that uh, intellectual yeah. properties have to jump through, and essentially, like we've kind of with Sherlock and Kong, I think we've opened the door to a lot of books that are open copyright not open copyright um intellectually like In properties the, yeah. open so like island of dr moreau um gosh i can't think of a whole lot right now but like but like moby dick island of dr moreau My, uh the the uh 10,000 leagues under the sea oh yeah uh story of like dorian gray there's insane amount of like figures or characters throughout history where like the the book is old enough where we could technically like or not just technically straight up we could get that like ip under hero clicks because um nobody owns it anymore think, it's just like open and out it's open what source I think essentially as enough characters just because there's been 
a handful of books uh, and I have what well, obvious bias toward it. But I think Three Musketeers could be made into probably a starter. So if these Marvel and DC starters were only like four figures each. So for Three Musketeers, it's like, boom, you have the Three Musketeers and then you have D'Artagnan. There is your four figure starter. If you wanted to like make a second part that goes with it, you can make like the man in the iron mask, the cardinal, uh, I forget like the main guard's name that's like with the cardinal, but like that guy, and then maybe like the king or something like that. Like that would also be really cool uh, for like a bigger starter. Another starter set is if it's like these new ones, it's like only four people. So I was for a second there, I was trying to think of like books that had like 10 characters you could use. Um, but if it's these newer starters, then it is only like four to like eight if you make two that go with it, which I think works definitely in their favor. For uh, for like intellectual properties that wouldn't have as many like quote unquote named characters that would deserve an entire whatever a twelve click long dial you know would be I think Three Musketeers would be a solid one. <sighs> What's Frankenstein? Are there really only two people in that book that matter? Like Frankenstein, Frankenstein Doctor Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Igor, Igor. There you go. Um, and then the, the girl that shows him that people are fine or whatever you could do her yeah. that whatever. I mean, you could do like Frank generic Frank. townsfolk with like torch or oh, something. Yeah. Like like three or four townsfolk on one dial, like a mob. Like mm. a uh yeah, like a, the the pitchfork mob type townsfolk. That'd be kind of funny. Bring back or horde like, tokens, is that what you're saying? Them? Yeah, yeah, we definitely need horde tokens. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, they're like the OG vicious mob horde of that is, whatever yeah, that really, is the og like, kind of are. token is they really kind of are <laughs> from the frankenstein. mob that chased off frankenstein. <laughs> frankenstein dude yeah like that could be a starter i don't know i think there's a lot you could do with starters uh but if we're saying non-marvel non-dc that's like the intellectual property i guess that's what comes to mind right yeah. now anyways. i mean we've already done some like we did dr jekyll mr hyde kind of like oh yeah we well i think it was just dr jekyll we there's no revisit that yeah no technical mr hyde that was like clicks but like he's on dial of dr he's jekyll. like yeah he switches to it yeah yeah so like there's definitely stuff like that that we've already made and like could definitely do again um or just like reach into like even further interesting yeah. stories i think island of dr moreau is interesting because there's not like a ton of descriptive figures in that but they're essentially animals that have been <laughs> like surgically shaped to look like humans or human-esque Ooh, so yeah. you could have like beagle man australian Fine. shepherd man orangutan Terrifying. man like Terrifying. yeah just like whatever <laughs> whatever uh kind of flavor you want to give to it you could and then obviously like the doctor and then i think like the i don't remember if he's a reporter or what he is but the guy that like goes to the island so like there's a ton of like stuff like that out there that we could go with and that's just assuming that like it's an ip that whiz kids isn't trying to get there's also tons of ips out there that they might be trying Ooh. to get to you so, know who knows? Uh, this was also mentioned but like in a Heroes Players and Collectors post. Yeah, Shakespeare clicks. Please. That'd be awesome. Romeo Juliet, Macbeth, all this stuff. Like that would be that would be so sick. I would actually be down for it. Especially if all the special powers are written like when Doth uses free yeah. you know, just like when Paddock calls Shakespeare the witches may use blah blah blah. In some like Shakespearean type writing, that would be hilarious. And then watching players have to be like, "What does any of this like?" I kind of get what it's saying, but what does this mean? So, I'm really hoping like that could be a thing. Bill then asks, "Who has a higher win percentage? B tier players playing S tier figures, or S tier players playing B B tier figures?" Uh, I think it's S tier players playing b tier figures like yes. absolutely yeah 100 like percent. i don't know if there's even like a a chance that it's the other way around yeah uh, not even right like not even i'd like to consider it but i feel like higher win percentage so like doesn't matter how long they've been playing it's just like you know uh how many wins two losses they have overall i definitely think it's always going to be the p 
people that are an S tier player, assuming like it's S, A, and then B. So like two tiers higher playing two tiers lower of figures, I think you're always going to, those players are always going to find a way to win. I mean, yeah. like, like we just talked about, Joe Safa was playing um, detective theme with double chase Shaggy. Like no yeah. one else in the field yeah. was even considering that. And he was annihilating some insane teams with that. He was doing so well with that up until like the top cut. And even then, he had a great showing after that. So, um, yeah, I think S tier players for sure. You can play a suboptimal build or suboptimal figures and still do insanely well. Absolutely. Kind of goes into this next question. We have a slew of questions here from Wesley R. In competitive games, which is more vital to win, figures and team building or player skill? I think, once again, just goes straight up player skill. 100% more vital to win is player yep. skill than figures and team building. Um, I am like an okay team builder, but I've done my best when other people have, like just being completely honest, I've done my best when other people have built the team and then I've kind of talked through it with them, maybe made a change or two and then like played that team. Like I think player skill easily more than like figures. Once again, like Joseph Avs. I also think he's an amazing team builder. Don't get me wrong. I've copied his teams a ton. Amazing team builder, but he's using like offbeat figures that other people aren't seeing the value in. So I think it again comes down to player skill for stuff like that. Yeah, that was a team that he had practiced for like six months, so not something that you could easily plug and play and just yeah. be ready to go. Yeah, like yeah, I think if you gave a person that had less skill the exact same team, they would definitely not get as high on in the tournament as he did. Like it's, I think it's hundred percent player skill. Um, number two. If invited onto Hot Ones, would you be able to withstand the heat? And who would represent your pod cla- podcast slash the Hero Who's community? My vote would be Simeon. He took, when we did our Hot Ones, he took the wings like a champ. Um, if if we wanted just someone that makes reactions, then put me on there. But if we want someone that's going to like <laughs> be able to be a trooper through it, Simeon. And who can also talk cohesively and not get insane under the hot sauce under the the brain melting sauce it's it's easily simian of, of us yeah i think i think i'd make it fairly far i don't know if i'd be able to close it out i've never tried like the top layer of like the hot ones uh heat value or whatever but i think i think i'd be up for the challenge if nothing else i think one bites in your favor though because we were cleaning wings yeah that's when, true um, only they do like one bite they do like a dab of sauce and take like a bite from that yeah yeah uh kind of a weird one uh, number three you tend to be more positive in general but especially about hero clicks and figures is that positivity genuine do you exaggerate for the podcast sometimes your energy is what i think sets you apart from other content creators uh well thank you wesley and i mean yeah it's meant to be entertaining i don't i don't walk up to see me and go whoa man have you seen this latest figure <laughs> but I do, I do want to say like that's how I feel on the inside. But that's not how I would like talk to him in person. But definitely, like when when we're on the podcast, I want like my emotions to just kind of flow and like just be as excitable as I actually do feel about something, or as happy as I do feel about it, or sometimes even as critical as I do feel about it. So right. I think we have a pretty, you know, pretty like genuine all around vibe of our show, and that's what I've always enjoyed. I think about anyone that's dialogue. listened long enough, like. You can tell, like, when we have, like, some down, like, there's not every figure we talk about are we excited for. Right. Some t- there's a lot of times where we'll be talking about a set or an aspect of a set or, like, a new rules change or something. I mean, especially rules change. I think if you go back and listen to, like, around Wonder Woman 80th, you'll you'll hear some, not necessarily, like, negative, but des- definitely, like, some... Um, some like hesitant positivity like it was definitely uh, an era of like don't know about this not really yeah, sure if i'm yeah. gonna like it uh but like as you listen you hear us like yeah we, we started playing with those news rules we got more interested in them we were like these actually work out fairly good like we were hesitant at the beginning we were still like open to the possibility but yeah we did we didn't enter that era with just like straight up absolute positivity about the game for sure and i think we exited it 
after playing multiple games with those rules, Dude. quite positive about the rules it was, change. It was 100%, like, not 100%, but, like, such a big impact was playing the games every week with whatever rules article came out to kind of, like, slowly get into the new rules definitely made them easier to, like, use versus just being like, what in the world? Oh, geez, what's next week going to be? Oh, what in the world? And then trying to implement them. But being able to, like, slowly do it every single week and play with the new rules, like, articles as they came out made it be like, what in the world? Getting rid of pushing damage? That's insane. That's whatever. And then, like, we played our first game without pushing, and I was like, wow, this is literally so much better. Oh, my gosh. Why has this not been a thing for longer? You know, like, that was the craziest thing about it. So... Definitely in that era specifically, we're so hesitant. Like, what in the world is going yeah. on? So there's a lot of and change. Then, People don't I like would change. say in general, uh, just like week to week, I would say the positivity is genuine. I don't think that there's a lot of exaggeration, if any, at all. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I genuinely like. I genuinely get excited for certain things about like the community and about sets and stuff. Like next phase is something that I'm like truly excited for. I really enjoyed the Hawkeye show. I really enjoyed the Moon Knight series. Um, I really enjoyed She-Hulk. The only thing I'm hesitant about that is I enjoyed She-Hulk because it wasn't like a combat focused show. It was like a storytelling show. And so I'm like, kind of don't know how they're going to translate this. But so far from what we've seen, it's been interesting and cool. And so, yeah, there's like times where I'm positive but like hesitant. And then there's times where I'm like more than hesitant and I'm like, I don't like Galactus at 750 points. I kind of think that a 300 point modern team right. would take him down. Like, that's definitely something that's come up is like, you know, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, I think overall we're positive because at the end of the day, we just want to collect stuff and play with stuff. And for the most part, WizKids puts out a good product, so we have plentiful options to play with and collect. Yeah, 100%. And then last question Wesley has here is, now that motorcycle equipment is a thing, can we get equipable Iron Man suits? Free for start keyword. Maybe the suit gives ESD, combat reflexes, etc. Sure, I think I'd be okay with an equipable Iron Man suit, but I think the idea of like an empty suit is already kind of being used with like the hall of armor and everything so i don't know but yeah i, I do like, say, like of an equipable iron man suit i 100 percent thought the suit. hall of armor was going to be equipable iron man or like yeah. pilotable maybe um one or the two and when it wasn't like yeah it was kind of confusing but i, I do think the shifting focus is kind of like a equipable like iron man sh- like shifting between like different armors that he has uh singular like person shifting and being able to equip like all the different possibilities but um what was it the the iron man briefcase was oh a, yeah that was a relic that, that we had at one point cool. so i could yeah. see that sort of thing coming back gave flight and invulnerability and force blast or something um but yeah it was a it was a fun mechanic when we had it and i don't see why they couldn't do something to bring it back I really, I really enjoyed that a lot. It was one of my favorite ones. Next up, James has, he says, more of a suggestion than a question, but uh, how about a segment where perhaps once a month or so, players can submit a team, give a brief summary of team strategy, and there can be a bit of this uh, dissection and theory crafting. Uh, sure. If people want to send in their teams, we can talk about them for a little bit. That's totally fine. Uh, we are planning on doing a Patreon exclusive in the works, maybe, uh, type of a team building centered podcast that would be like a patreon exclusive podcast that would be kind of fun so maybe something like that will be in the future we'll have to see but if there is interest in that i'm i mean i've got i'm not stopping anybody from yeah messaging dialage for hero hooks podcast on facebook about a team and if general you want to submit it yeah like we'll we'll or, talk about uh, it or I, emailing dialage for hooks at gmail.com yeah, I, <laughs> and I won't say that we'll we'll specifically like stop the show for that, but if you want to submit builds, like we can talk yeah. about them for sure. By all means. Super Cave asks, congratulations on partial Blue Kids affiliation. Any chance of them hiring you guys to just work their events full time? And is that something you would want to do? That is super interesting. Uh, I love doing the events, so I would definitely love. I don't know how you could do it necessarily. Full time. That's, yeah, that's where uh, the, the know big that's issue comes in. But... So far, we know of. I mean, we can assume that nationals and worlds is happening this year. Right. But so far, we only know of Adepticon this year. Um, 
we can assume the other two because it'd be really weird if like suddenly they didn't. But at best, that's three. Uh, I don't know exactly how that becomes like a full time position. Uh, they could definitely hire us out to cover those events, but again, like that that wouldn't really be full time. It would just be yeah when those things happen and like at best i think even like if we went to like every big event that was going to happen in a year i think at best it'd be like six to eight and um right i mean that would feel kind of full-time but like man still wouldn't be able to quit my day job right uh, it would be awesome. Don't get me wrong. Actually, I don't think just doing events would be like full time, but I would love to cover literally every event. I, I always have a blast doing it, and it's always so fun seeing the community's reaction and just letting the community know. Like, not everybody can make it to everything, so it's really important that events are covered really well. Yeah, and I just think it improves the overall quality of the event. I know the vibe of every event. You know, not to toot our own horn too much, but like the vibe of the event. When we're there doing coverage, you know, it really makes people be like, oh, I got to get on camera, maybe talk or whatever. Like, I feel like it kind of like puts the pressure on and makes people feel a bit more like athletes or superstars or whatever. Uh, when they see there is a media team that is going to like document super well how well they do throughout the tournament and maybe interview them and everything. And I just I really think it really just increases the overall atmosphere of the event. It makes it feel like so professional and everything. And it's really cool. So. I would love more opportunities to do things like that. Hundred percent. I think it definitely like brings it up to like a a more sporting level of kind of like yeah event. Um, I know somebody said like Dial H makes these events feel like the Super Bowl of Hero Clicks or something like that. They said something along those lines. I can't remember, but um, that's not exactly like what we're trying for. But it is cool that like I'm glad that as players as uh, viewers, etc., like people watching, people playing, they do feel like there's an increase of like importance or um, a little bit of I don't I don't know exactly what you like. Y- you've got like a little bit more like stardom really, for the weekend. Feels, yeah, like I feel like uh, yeah, like it makes it makes it a little bit more important. Because as a player, you don't have the time to, like, take pictures, videos, etc., like, yourself. But, like, when you get home and, like, your parents are like, I don't really know what this game that you're talking about is. It's cool that you're, like, the champion of this weekend. But, like, you know, I don't know what it is that you're talking about. And then you show them this video and, like, they see there's a bunch of people, like, cheering on in the background. Not really cheering, but, like, quietly watching uh, in the background. And uh, I think, like, it, yeah, it definitely transposes a more importance onto the event and it's cool i'm glad that we can bring that to any event that we go to and hopefully yeah we can do it to more yeah be awesome and to end us out mf goop asks how was applebee's you know it wasn't the it wasn't the best i mean it's applebee's it's like pretty all right uh, uh, not quite fast food, uh, fast casual. What is Applebee's? Kind of a restaurant, kind of just bar food. It's okay. Applebee's is fine. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to go. Um, yeah, Calder went yeah, by himself did. at one point. Yeah, I did. That's right. I did. But, um, I yeah, totally I hope, did. I, yeah, I guess I, totally I never asked. Did. I hope you had a good time, but I. Yeah, I have. Of course, was at, in a different restaurant, time. so I don't know. Right, of course, me having those three glasses by myself, I had a great time at Applebee's and definitely, definitely wasn't just Ian taking the picture as he walked away from the table when you guys finally left. I mean, that'd uh, be super weird like, to make it look like I that. went to Applebee's by myself. I don't know why a person some would, reason. would try and make it look like he did that I. I don't know what you're trying to imply because yeah. that, that'd be super weird for someone to try and make it look like you went to Applebee's alone instead why of just would anybody. Why just would your anyone? waiter just taking the picture makes more sense <laughs> obviously, to me. I, obviously, I asked the waiter to take my picture at Applebee's because why wouldn't I? Yup. Nope. This all makes this all makes sense. This all just makes sense. It was fine. Thank you, Goop. <laughs> Thanks. And that is 
gosh, if you guys don't know the Applebee's stuff, please go to Facebook and see. If you walk away from that post, I don't know, it's lost somewhere in here, but it's just a picture of me at Applebee's. If you walk away from that post and you think that I went to Applebee's by myself and did any of these things, I don't know what to tell you. But, it's uh, pretty convincing. All the evidence <laughs> yeah. is there. Yeah. Gosh. Every comment has you saying that it was you there yeah, alone. Cause, so cause of course I would sign every comment. <laughs> it was so wild. Who who else would sign your name? That I think that's against the law to sign someone certainly, else's name certainly on Facebook. Certainly not. Post. The two other people that <laughs> run the Facebook page could be anyone. Could be anyone. Could have could have been anyone. Could have been, been anyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to have been anyone. Oh, uh, gosh. But yeah, guys, that is, that's all we got for the show. We're going to take it a little easy this week. Uh, thanks for listening, but definitely stay tuned on the YouTube channel. There's just an insane amount of content coming your way. We'll probably talk about all these next phase dials eventually. We don't need to talk about them here because we're the ones talking about them on YouTube in the first place. Yeah. So when the, when the set gets fully really released and when other channels start doing unboxings or whenever we start to see more stuff that's not just our stuff, then we'll probably start, start talking some next phase. But for right now, we've already talked all the next phase because we're the ones talking about it. So make sure to follow us on YouTube and check out all the next phase stuff. If you haven't seen Kong or Sherlock yet, that's also on YouTube. And we do have some chess clock gameplay. And of course, all the live streams from the Champion Clicks event are all up on YouTube. Literally, there's so much content. Yeah, tens of hours so of live gameplay to watch. And also, yeah. Alpha, Alpha Strike also got quite a bit of gameplay. If you want to yeah. check out the games that we didn't get, there's some good games that we missed because we were only streaming the top table. So I actually, yeah, I'm actually going to go back and watch a few of the games that he got because some of them were pretty solid games. I agree. There were some fun ones that were up there for players that we weren't particularly able to check out. So check them yeah. out. Alpha Strike. YouTube. Subscribe to them. Check them out. And uh, Scott Porter's not unboxing this. It's us. That's right. So uh, if you didn't know. If you didn't catch on, Scott Porter not doing this unboxing. He'll be returning, but not for this one. So once again... We are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com and use code DIAL5 when you do so. If you want to go direct to the source, I hear they're going to have some cool deals. They've already got Avengers 60th Brick. Gets you a Pegasus Captain America convention Ooh. exclusive when you buy it. Uh, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. And use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of your Heroclix orders when you do so. Not available for Iconics or specialty figures or pre-orders. Right on. Like always, ladies and gentlemen, for all your Heroclix needs, make sure you dial H and happy trails.